Hey there, welcome to episode 177 of Mike's Collection. Now I hesitate to actually call this an episode because I think it's going to be very brief. Um, oftentimes my episodes run from a half hour to an hour. This one's going to be nice and short. The reason being, I just posted a new video yesterday, and I think it was just a couple of days before that I posted another video. Um, I don't want to bombard you guys with a bunch of half hour, 45 minute long videos because then you'll get bored and you'll stop watching. So uh, this one here, um, the only reason I'm sitting down to do this is because I got a brand new package in today and I just want to open it. So I think I'm going to share that with you guys. So it just came from my community mailbox and there was a key in my mailbox indicating that I had a larger package in one of the the big compartments and a package has arrived from Big Bad Toy Store and I have not opened this yet I literally just got in the door with it and it was actually a surprise um, I have quite a few things that I've ordered lately I don't know what's been going on lately like I know all about you know there's been some shipping delays you know all related to the COVID and all that sort of stuff but uh, I've been ordering stuff all through the pandemic and I haven't really found any significant delays from what I'm normally used to. But for whatever reason, all the stuff I've ordered in the past two months or so has really kind of lagged behind. And at this point in time, I think I have five packages that, I've, uh, that I'm waiting on. And I'm not usually somebody that hovers over my tracking of when items come in. I usually, I'm kind of like, well, when it comes, it comes. But I've got so many items that I've been checking my tracking every day to see, like, where is this item? It's still in Chicago. This one's in Quebec. This one's in New Jersey. And, I'm, and uh, even just earlier today, like, about two hours ago, I checked, and it seemed like nothing was even remotely close to me. So when I went to check the mailbox, I was not expecting to get a package. Uh, I think I just forgot to track this one. So it crept up on me. And I honestly, I don't even remember what's in here. Um, I'm sure I'll, as soon as I open it, I'll know which package it is, but, um, I've just been shipping so much stuff and it's all been delayed. So this is kind of exciting. I got a package on a day I wasn't expecting one and I honestly don't remember exactly what's in here. Um, so yeah, let's open this up together and we'll see what I got. All right, so a good a good variety of stuff in here. So first up, this is not very exciting to look at. This is one of the Transformer Selects figures, and these figures come in these really boring boxes um, that don't show you anything about the figure inside. But what I've got in here is the character Art Fire, and this is a repaint of uh, the character Inferno. Um, I'm pretty excited about this guy and uh, yeah we'll pop him open and review him later this is another one I'm excited about and I don't get a lot of these uh, I'm not a big Gundam guy I don't know much about Gundam um, but I did collect it quite a bit in the 90s when Bandai released these like three and three quarter inch figures here in North America which was the first like big push of Gundam here in North America and uh, never seen the show or anything like that but I collected them and uh, that was, I mostly collected that stuff because the other stuff I grew up on, G.I. Joe, He-Man, Transformers, all that stuff was kind of on hiatus in the 90s. So I gravitated towards Gundam. But for the last 20 years or so, all the things I loved from my childhood have been back. You know, I'm collecting Marvel, Star Wars, G.I. Joe, Transformers, He-Man. So I don't really buy much Gundam stuff. But this new line of Gundam Universe figures are six-inch action figures and every now and again, they redo a character that I had in the smaller scale when I was a kid. Or not when I was a kid, in my early 20s, really. Um, and I get excited. And I, so I have three of these guys in my collection so far. But this guy here, Heavy Arms, which is like the orange and white. And he's got these big Gatling guns. Um, this guy was my favorite. And uh, so, yeah, I was really excited when they put this guy up for pre-order several months ago. And uh, yeah, really excited to open this guy up because it's something different. For me you know really cool stuff so we'll take a look at him later too now i've got some reaction figures in here as well 
you know I've been buying a ton of reaction figures lately. So these are the latest uh, reaction figures from uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle line. And these things have come a long way. Like when you think of reaction figures, I've still got some of my Universal Monster ones here from my last video I did. Um, like this is a reaction figure, you know, they're simple five points of articulation, kind of based on the old Kenner figures of the late 70s, early 80s. So these are kind of throwback retro figures. Anyway, I have the earliest Ninja Turtle figures, you know, from Super 7 are a lot like this, except Ninja Turtles by their nature are a little bulkier. They're like wider characters and stuff, so they're not as skinny as this. But the last few waves of uh, reaction figures in the Turtle line has gotten way more detailed. Like, you, they barely qualify as reaction figures now, I would say. So here we go. This is Ray Filet, the uh, Stingray or Manta Ray character. And, like, look at the size of him compared to this little wolf man. Like, he's so big and bulky. Like, a lot of people complain about reaction figures being too expensive. These things retail for about uh, 18 bucks in America. They're about 25 here in Canada. And they say, you know, for these little dinky figures with only five points of articulation, these should be like 10 bucks and stuff. And I've always kind of agreed with that. Like, I understand that Super 7 is a small company, and that's why they have to charge a little bit more for these things. But when I see a figure like this, with this much bulk, like, this is pretty heavy. And, like, the size of this bubble, like, that's a big figure. Like, I think this is definitely worth the uh, the 25 bucks. So, so there you go. Ray Filet. Very cool. Another one from the new series is the Mutagen Man. Now, Mutagen Man, the, uh, the bigger um, Ultimates figure, also put out by Super 7, was my toy of the year last year. So... I kind of had to get this new version of him. Like it looks really great too with that the glass body on him there. Again, he's also big, not as big as Ray Filet, but he's definitely not a dinky little Kenner figure. Like this thing's got some heft to him and got some nice sculpted detail. You know, diff different uh, types of plastic with the clear plastic there. So yeah, really cool. And you gotta like the card art on these guys. Just looks great. And another reaction figure. So here is Slash, the evil turtle. Again, some great artwork on the card there. Another big, hefty figure. Like, uh, when I take a look at these guys outside of the packaging, I'll do a side-by-side -side with Slash next to, say, like Donatello or something from the Wave 1 figures, and you'll see just how much bulkier and bigger this guy is. So definitely more bang for your buck. So yeah, very cool. And the last thing I've got in here... Uh, I'm super excited about this figure, and I'll talk more about it later. But this is a Marvel Legend from the new Doctor Strange series. And this is Sleepwalker. So this character here, um, he's not very well known. You see here, he's got kind of this alien looking guy. Um, this is a character that debuted in the 90s. Uh, and I started collecting comic books in the 80s. But... Uh, you know, when I joined up in the 80s, I felt like I was playing catch-up. You know, Spider-Man was already in the issue 200s. X-Men was in the 200s. Um, so everything I was reading, I was, you know, all the stories would say, you know, for more information on this, go back and see Amazing Spider-Man 140 or whatever. So I was like, I was kind of new to the club and playing catch-up. But in the 90s, they introduced this whole new wave of characters. So they, there was a brand new Ghost Rider. There was a new superhero team of teenagers called the New Warriors. There was a rebooting of the Guardians of the Galaxy, who hadn't had their own comic book for many years. Um, then they introduced brand new characters like Sleepwalker and Darkhawk. Um, there was a brand new Deathlock. Um, all kinds of these cool new characters. There was a whole wave of stuff that all happened within the, a year or two in the 90s. And it was really fun to be a part of it. Me and my brother Doug collected all of those new books. And I felt like I had a little bit more ownership of these characters. Because I was there right from the beginning. And uh, I've wanted an action figure of Sleepwalker since he first debuted in the 90s. And, uh, and we're talking early 90s, like 90, 91 when this guy first debuted. And uh, this is the first ever figure of Sleepwalker. We're finally getting one. Um, and yeah, it's so awesome that he's finally here. Um, super, super stoked about this. So uh, yeah, there you go. That is my unboxing. So thank you for joining me in that. So that's it for today's episode. I'm just going to open the box and walk away. 
Normally, I would then flip the camera around and I would review each figure outside of the box, showing you close-ups and comparisons and all that stuff. But uh, since I did just post a video yesterday, I don't want to shoot a whole other video. So make sure you come back for my future videos because over my next few videos, I'll review all of this stuff separately. So, um, so yeah, be sure to come back for that. And if you want to make sure you don't miss them, you should subscribe to the channel. You should like this video. And uh, even though there wasn't a whole lot to talk about in this video, you please leave me some questions, comments, all that stuff below. That's very much appreciated. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon with another video. Ciao.